I'm Erin J.B. White of White Witch Cosplay, and this is The Crafter. We're making magic with all-purpose dye today. That's right, we're having a real-life naked blue moment today. Uh, but the things I'm wearing, they're all different kinds of fibers. We've got acrylic and nylon and then wool. So it's going to be a little bit of an experiment to see if we can get them to turn to get them to turn this really nice evening blue writ dye color. So let's find out how long it takes each one to dye on the soap top. And I know the first thing we need to do to get started is head to the washer. I went online to find Ritz instructions and the very first thing they recommend you doing is throwing everything you want to dye in the wash and I usually use tap cold and I just let it run. This is to make sure any starch or anything that's still in the clothing is gone and you have a nice even starting process to start your dyeing with. Now I've got my water boiling in my biggest pot that I've got that fits on the stove top and once that water is almost to boiling then we'll add some things in. Now depending on what kind of fiber type you have, RIT suggests different things. For some things, RIT suggests using a cup of salt, but for these fibers, RIT suggested using a cup of vinegar. So now that my water is almost to temperature, you can see me here pouring in the cup of vinegar and mixing it into the hot water. Now the next thing it recommends doing is using a teaspoon of dishwasher soap to help promote even dyeing. So I'll just put a teaspoon of this gain soap into my hot pot. And once that's ready to go, we can pour in our red dye after shaking the bottle well. So for this evening blue, I chose this color because it's kind of halfway between Bobaton and Ravenclaw. And we were going for like a lightly Hogwarts, slight Academia vibe. So I felt like this writ evening blue sort of kind of hit the middle, like maybe I was an exchange student from Bobaton to Hogwarts. And here I am mixing in all the dye, making sure it's spread throughout my hot water. All right, now that my dye, vinegar, and dishwasher soap have come to almost boiling, now I can add my things in. There goes the sweater vest. Here I'm adding in the wool felt hood that will become the hat. Just kind of submerging it all, making sure all those air bubbles come out of the items so that they'll sink to the bottom. That is the tie, the satin tie, and last but not least, the scarf the acrylic scarf. And I'm just pushing all of these items in and again because they are different fibers they're gonna take different times to really take in all that dye pigment and they'll, they'll be in this pot for vastly different times and let's find out how long it takes to get them to the same color. We're gonna start with 10 minutes and after 10 minutes we'll pull them out and see what we think. So here I am pulling out the first item and that is the sweater vest. After 10 minutes, it's ready to go. It is the blue that I want it to be and it only took 10 minutes for this rayon acrylic knit sweater vest to become like this pretty bow baton blue. So it's ready and I'm gonna go ahead and plop this hot thing into the sink and rinse it off with some cool water until all the dye is rinsed out. So after 10 minutes, the next thing to come out will be the hat. Now the hat took 20 minutes and it was darker than I wanted it to be, if I'm honest with you. And I wanted to pull it out at 10 minutes, but I was kind of stuck with this problem of it, it wasn't tied evenly. There were parts of the hood that were still really dark. There were parts of the hood that were still really light. Um, so I'd rather have it all one dark color than have it be splotchy, parts right color, parts dark color. So I just accepted that it was darker. Probably should have used less dye in the pot for that. Um, once I'm done having each item in the stovetop pot and it's been in the hot water for however long it needs to to appropriately soak up the dye, then you're going to rinse it in cool water. 
until the water runs clear and you don't see any more of the dye transfer in the water that is being rinsed out of your items. The cool water that I'm using also helps stretch the fibers of this hat in addition to the hot water. So the hot water and the cool water, they're both helping kind of stretch this wool hat out. So once I'm done rinsing this wool hat, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the hat mold that I have. So as it dries overnight, it'll somewhat take the shape of this hat mold that I've got um, for a Bobaton hat. You can see I'm kind of stretching it down over the hat mold and I'm just going to, I'm not going to get too particular about it. I'm just want it to be somewhat in the shape as it dries out overnight because it's going to take about 48 hours to really get this hat totally dry and ready to wear. So here's the hat stretched over the mold. There's one last thing before I do before I let it dry overnight. I just take some thread and I kind of push down on those pieces, especially that little curve at the top that I really want to make sure shows up in the final hat shape. And I just let it dry like that overnight. Here we are pouring out all of the hot pot dye. So the sweater vest took 10 minutes. The hat took 20 minutes. Everything else, AKA the satin tie and scarf. Well, that's been in there for over two hours to get these colors. And once they've finally been rinsed until no more color comes out in the sink, you put them in the dryer, set them on high, and let them dry. And that sets the dye in these items so that next time you're able to wash and dry them without any color transfer. So everything's dry, how long did it take? All right, the scarf took over two hours to get this blue. The sweater vest took just 10 minutes to get to this blue. Then next, the tie. Well, that took over two hours as well to get to this color blue. And last but not least, the hat hood. Well, that only took 20 minutes to get to this color hat. But there's still some shaping and trimming of the hat that we need to do before it's ready. So if you'll remember, we started off with this hood and then we dyed it and left it on this to dry overnight. As I mentioned, I left those little threads to try to kind of push it down over the mold. So now I'm gonna remove these threads and get to work steaming the hat into the perfect bow baton shape with the little pointy top and the flipped up trim. Now I'm just using like a regular clothes steamer for this. That's all you need. And this has been drying for about 12 hours. So it's not totally dry when I'm using the steamer, but the steamer is just reheating it up and you can see it's loosening up the tension in those fibers again. And I'm able to kind of pull the hat hood down over the form even more, just squish it and squish it down, squish out all of those wrinkles. And as I do that, it's slowly taking on the form of the hat mold. Now this hat has been kind of an item of contention for me in my cosplay journeys. One of my very first cosplays I ever made was a complete Bobaton uniform that I wore to a Harry Potter pub crawl. And I was reading this blog on how to make the Bobaton hat because I couldn't afford one myself. So I was like, I'll just have to make it. And so I bought this hat mold and they told you how to mold it on there. And I had a really hard time like getting it onto the mold. I didn't have a steamer at the time so I think I was just using like dunked it in hot water um, rather than having like an actual steamer to steam and stretch at the same time. So it never really fit over my head with a wig where you can see here. Um, but the thing that I was most upset about it is if we zoom in any being closer you can see it's like weirdly crusty and then there's like it's sticky and matted and then there's like this weird band around the the brim that's not supposed to be there it was an accident um and that's because instead of dyeing the hood like this method that i'm currently showing you um the blog suggested that i spray paint the wool hat 
and uh, I would not recommend spray painting wool, guys. It, it stayed so sticky and matted and gross. And instead of having um, like a cord like I'm using here on the hat to kind of pin down the little pieces that, that really need to be pulled, like that top point and then around the brim, instead of using a cord, <clears throat> I used a rubber band. And that is what left that very odd like discolored band around the hat brim where like the hat meets the brim. Um, yeah, so don't spray paint wool. <laughs> this was my second go at a hat, probably, golly, I don't even want to think, maybe like 67 years later. Uh, I'm finally remaking this hat and it's still <sighs> my anathema. Still my anathema because even though I really love how elegant this hat turned out and I think it looks really nice and it's vast, vast, vast improvement over my old Bobaton hat, it still frustrates me that it's not the right color. I should have used less of the root all-purpose dye on this hat if I really wanted it to be a true Bobaton blue. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to make a third Bobaton hat? I, I, I don't know, we'll see. I am happy with how this hat turned out, but the color could have been closer to that Bobaton blue if I would used less dye in the pot to begin with. Overall, I still think it turned out really nicely because it kind of picked up a darker um, blue in this skirt that I got from Scarlet Darkness that I wore with this whole look. So, you know, I'm not upset about it, but it's just funny that I attempted this entire look just to remake this hat, and yet still the hat is my anathema. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, here you can see I've kind of already started to flip up the brim of the hat and I've already been able to move down a lot of the wrinkles that were up near the top. And now I'm working on trying to get the correct bend in the brim so it, it flips up right at the front of Fleur's face that Bobaton hat does. So that's what I'm trying to make sure that I have the angle of the little point correct. Um, and so that will be straight off the back and then straight off the front will be this bent hood, this bent brim. But I kind of use a lot of steam to try and make sure that that brim is cocked correctly. And in order to hold the cloth hood to the hat mold um, better right where the brim meets the hat part, I use, I'm using another cord just like I did. It's like this kind of like shoelace material. I used up at the top as well and that just holds it onto the form and makes sure that that particular part of the hat as the hat dries it's not going to shrink up that that's going to stay the same size and that I'll be able to hopefully wear this hat with a wig unlike last time and uh, not using a rubber band this time because I don't want to leave a mark so this should be a much better method. One thing to note about the brim is that there are little like lumps and bumps on the brim, but I will be trimming those off once the shape of the hat is fully complete. I'll make sure that everything is nice and even. Here I am starting to fold down the brim right in the center of the face. And then I'm pulling the brim down all the way down on that side. Now this was kind of difficult because the wool had already been stretched a good deal um, and it didn't really want to do the curve down. It's such a dramatic turn that Fleur's hat has. It, it didn't really want to go ahead and do that, but it was nothing that couldn't be fixed with just more steam. <laughs> if your fibers start to shrink up or they start to feel like they don't want to do what you want them to do anymore, just keep on steaming the hat. Now hats will naturally shrink up as they dry, so even though I've tied it down some, it will kind of shrink up over the next 12 hours until it's wearably dry. Um, but we can do any last minute fixes with that iron you see in the background. And it'll probably take a little bit of brim work um, 
with the iron to get this perfect and ready for a photo shoot. So now the hat has dried and we're ready to take off the lacing that I put in place. As you can see, the brim has already kind of flipped itself back up all the way around. So we'll use the iron to fix that in a second. Um, but first we're gonna take up all the cording and take the hat off the mold and there it is, check it out. The felt is now holding the shape of the hat mold when we started off with nothing more than a cloth hood. So that's pretty cool. Now we're gonna use that iron to get that brim to behave like I want it to. I'm just using the steam setting on an iron I already have at the house. And I'm steaming that brim down flat in the center and along the side. This is a really effective and quick method that I did just a couple hours before the photo shoot. So it, it didn't take long to dry at all to do this final shaping of the hat. So I'm just doing some final hand shaping on that brim while the fibers are still warm and stretchy. And yeah, there you go. We've got the Beau Baton hat. Now it still has a few bumps on the side at the rim of the brim, so to speak. Uh, and we're gonna trim those up to keep it looking its most elegant. Now, when I cut these, it kind of left a little bit of white. I wish I had gone back and, and colored those blue, but for the purposes of this photo shoot, I knew they wouldn't be visible. So I was like, ah, you know, like, let's just keep going because this is photo shoot day and we, we got stuff to do. The last thing I think it needed was this light blue ribbon to really tie it together with the other pieces of blue that we've dyed. That light blue matches the shade that the tie turned perfectly. So I was really excited to include this ribbon to finish off my hat. And there you have it, the final Beau Baton hat. It's really fun and elegant to wear and an easy crop project. So next crop project, let's talk about this backdrop. How did I make all these Hogwarts letters floating around? And it looks like it's my 11th birthday. You know, they say no post on Sundays. Well, I'm making my own post. I went and Googled and I found a great blog that had a little template for making your own um, Hogwarts letters. So I went and made one for all the different locations that I lived. Um, Sail City where I grew up, Atlanta where I lived before I came to DC, my college town, and I printed those all off on my home printer and I also included this very fun one that had like where I live now and it says final notice like sorry this is the last Hogwarts letter we're ever sending you. You better come or not. Make up your mind. Um, and I made this shoot for a set of birthday self-portraits that I really enjoyed doing to try and capture like the melancholy of outgrowing a fandom and something that you once loved and finding that you can't love it quite as much as you used to. So here come my Hogwarts letters fresh from computer to printer. You can see Sail City, that's where I <laughs> grew up. And then uh, the next one is Heart of Atlanta. That's where I came from before I came to DC. Now that I've got my trusty printed Hogwarts letters, I'm gonna use my Surebonder hot glue gun. I use it for literally everything. And I'm gonna make some seals to seal up these little letters. Um, I'm not actually putting letters in it because this is just a photo prop and we're just going loosey-goosey really quick with this. So I'm just squirting out uh, piles of hot glue and then painting them red. Yeah, I know, it, it's really not a fancy project. I had this cool coin and so I'm squishing it into the somewhat warm um, hot glue to sort of get a seal effect and then the seal will fit over the emblem. Now I made these and then rewatched Sorcerer's Stone and I realized that I should have put the seal below the little Hogwarts badge not on top of it. But uh, for the purposes of this photo shoot, I thought it was fine. You know, you live, you learn, you watch your references before you make your items. Otherwise, you end up just a little annoyed. Eh, it is what it is. <laughs> so I cut out all my letters like this, and I'm just going to fold over that top to give it the appearance of an envelope. Um, it's not going to be super in focus in photos and videos, so it, it, it doesn't need to be super fancy. I can just fold over this top, stick one of those seals on it, and call it a day. There I go, a Hogwarts letter. 
I made 18 of these letters because I turned 29 this year, so I've had 18 birthdays since my 11th birthday when I was supposed to quote unquote get my first Hogwarts letter. Um, so I hung 18 of these guys up and then I had that last one, the 18th, be my final notice prop for a lot of my photo shoots and video shoots. So I've got all of these letters, how do I get them to hang? I used a lot of fishing lines. So here I am uh, with my photo backdrop <laughs> and I'm cutting out the fishing line to length. I just wanted them scattered across the photo backdrop both in front and behind me when I was standing. So these are the ones that are gonna be behind me on the backdrop. I literally just hot glued these little envelopes that I'd made to fishing line. That's all it took, there's nothing fancy with this. It's just a prop, just a set. So here I am just hot gluing that paper directly onto the fishing line. So after I've made several Hogwarts acceptance letter garlands, I'm ready to hang them up. Like I mentioned, I want some behind me and some in front. The ones behind me are easy. Normally my backdrop hangs on a curtain rod in front of my craft room closet, and I just hung these literally right in front of the backdrop. Um, now backdrops normally are supposed to go on this backdrop set that you can see me assembling here, but mine normally just stays in storage, but today it's getting a job. It's holding up more Hogwarts acceptance letters. So here I am assembling that frame so I can hang more of these fishing line garlands from the top of it so those can be in front of me when I'm shooting to give more of a depth to my video and photo. So here's the almost ready set with all the letters flying around and my final notice prop that I loved so much. And here is the final items all together. I've got my acceptance letter props. I have my dyed hat, scarf, tie, and sweater vest. And thank you so much for hanging out in the craft room with me, guys. I had a great time this November. Come back next month where I'm upcycling a Christmas tree skirt into a bodice. <laughs> He was like, not too close.